Now, have you ever wondered about just upping sticks, leaving your job, hopping on a plane and exploring the wildest parts of the globe? Well, one local man did just that when facing redundancy, Adrian Hall decided to take a trip of a lifetime to the unforgiving Arctic. And he's back and on our sofa now to tell us how a dream trip has transformed his life. Hello to you. Hello. Well, probably not quite as exciting being here as the Arctic, <laughs> but, but nevertheless. But you've written all about it, which I is have. why you're yes. here today. So tell us, why did you actually go? Why did I go? Well, I was, as you say, uh, facing redundancy. I was also facing the prospect of my 40th birthday. I was thinking you know, I, I should do something to kind of you know, mark this. So I thought, yeah, I could either buy you know, a Harley Davidson or something, or you know, more, more sort of attractive to me was to go somewhere. And um, I wanted to go, there's a particular part of Greenland I wanted to go to. I'd been to the Arctic, um, different parts of the Arctic a few times before, but I particularly wanted to go to northeast Greenland, which is quite a hard place to get to. It's quite an expensive place to get to as well. So I thought... Um, I've now got some time, and in the absence of gainful employment, some money. So, so what was the attraction of the Arctic? Because you don't mind me saying, it looks pretty barren. I mean, normally people who get a little redundancy package would probably go on holiday to somewhere warmer climates and sit on the beach and drink a few pina coladas. <laughs> it seems far away from that. Mm. Yeah, I think, well, that to me, that's the attraction. It is a, uh, a very sort of um, barren place with a very kind of sterile beauty. Very few people there. But a really interesting environment, loads and loads of very interesting uh, birds and animals you can see. So, yeah. Just now, you went in, such a um, in the summer months, so yes. it was basically it was 24-hour daylight. Mm, I mean, how did your body adjust to that? Uh, slowly is the answer. Um, it takes quite a while to get used to sleeping because, you know, we're used to having this fairly regular sleep pattern, which is dictated by when it's light and dark. Mm. But when it's uh, always light, it, take, it takes days to get used to trying to get to sleep. It is just that sort of trying to drop off. That's sort of like the, yes, the whole thing. It must, must be very hard. And um, so did you meet any other people there or were you totally on your own? You're on Milne Island, which I have to say I've never heard of. Milne Land, yes. Well, oh, Milne Land, sorry. I'd, I've yeah. gone there with um, some other people. So with, with my, uh, my forthcoming extended break from work coming up, I've been doing some research and found uh, an expedition going there got in contact with um, the people organising it and, uh, and signed up. So I right. went with some people I didn't know, but... Um, and that was OK? And Sorry. So just down the coast as well, there is um, a coronation of people down there. So, they, they, I mean, how do they live their lives? Do they, do they go to bed at night? I mean, how do they, do they live very differently to us? Well, so so the, the people, it's an Inuit village um, called Itokame, which is about 11 or 12 hours boat ride away from this end of Milland, wow. and uh, the people in some ways lead very, very different lives to us. When we, when we came back from Milland, we, uh, we actually had to make an unscheduled stop in the village because the ice conditions wouldn't let us get back to the little airstrip, and the people were um, engaged in a narwhal hunt, which is not something you see off here. A what hunt? A narwhal, a narwhal like a whale, hunt. isn't it? It's a whale that the has a, spear, with a tusk yeah. in front. Mm. Um, so there was a pot of narwhal um, just offshore from the village and the people were speeding around in boats hunting. But then in other ways, yeah. they're very similar. They walk around in you know, jeans and trainers, mm. talking on their iPhones. Really? And <laughs> you don't that. expect that, do no, you? Not really? at all. I bet they get better Wi-Fi than Norfolk. <laughs> they really <laughs> do, yes. Probably yeah. Yeah. But how long did it take you to get there then? Because it's not, as you just said, it's not a very easy place to get to at all. No, so you, you fly from this country to, uh, to Iceland. And then the next day, you fly from Iceland over the Denmark Strait to Greenland to uh, a village called Kulasuk that has an old um, Cold War uh, early warning system uh, airport. And then you get in a tiny plane and fly up the coast for a, for a couple of hours or so to a little airstrip called Constable Point, which is just a relic of a uh, 1960s attempt to find oil, which I oh, guess they didn't find any, but they left a little gravel airstrip behind. And then you get in some boats and you bounce around in some boats for about you know, 11 or 12 hours. Sounds like, like an expedition just to get there. I was going to say that. There. that is, yeah, it's a mission to get there, yes. So you've written a book all about your experiences. Yes, yeah. Just tell us about that because you were a publisher beforehand. I was, yeah. I'd worked for about 20 years for a Dutch publishing company. Uh, who had a tiny office in Norwich 
And when that came to an end, I'd, I'd already decided I wanted to do something. And I'd, I'd always, I'd, again, I'd always had this idea that I'd like to write a book. I quite fancied the idea of just sitting there. They say everyone's got one in them. Mm. Yes. And just giving it a go. And again, so this was another thing which would you know, with the benefit of a bit of time as well, because you do need time to do it. I decided, I had such a great time um, on Milnland, I decided to write a book about it. And this was 10 years ago. And in those days, if you'd written a book, you, if you were lucky, you could tout it around a few publishers and maybe get picked yeah. up. If you weren't, you could maybe pay for it to be printed and end up with a garage full of boxes, <laughs> which you're probably unlikely to shift. Well, thank you. And if anybody wants to find out more about the book, it's available, no doubt, on uh, good, e good bookshops. Good, good e-book stores, e Amazon and the rest. So, Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming in. You're welcome. I'm going to the